Hi folks, well I've just done another little carving. I'm stuck on that for a few weeks, although this can come off tomorrow. You hoody. It'll be nice. Um I've just covered a little ass. <laughs> little fat ass, in fact. Uh, an ass is a cross between a donkey and a horse, if you didn't know. For, for all you millennials out there who might be watching this. But yes, um, and there is a funny story, in fact. My wife asked me what I was carving, I said, I'm carving a little fat ass. And she said to me, but I've already got one. And she did say it. She has got a sense of humour. And we both laughed. So, thank you for that, my wife. But uh, there's a little bit of video missing at the beginning. I've gone through basic steps of what I've done. I haven't done cut for cut, not at all. I've shown you as I'm going through it and what I've done and my thought process and what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, or as much as I can explain. If there are any questions, you can pop them in the comments below. I do appreciate comments, thumbs up and likes. So if you do want to comment and just say hello, please drop a comment in. Uh, if you have got a channel that's relevant to any of the stuff that's on my channel, not toys, not foreign music videos, don't bother contacting me, okay? There is a little bit of the video missing at the beginning. Now, what I did is I drew a, the I drew a basic outline on a piece of work wood, not this, and then I cut it out in two dimensions. I could have cut it out in three dimensions by flipping it, putting pieces back on and flipping it, cut it out again. I will do a video on that uh, a later date, might even be next week. This is part one of this because I'm going to paint this and finish this one and show you the painting process and the finishing process of what I'm going to do on it. Anyway, I'll get on with it. Don't forget, thumbs up, comments are always welcome, and it's nice to be nice. <laughs> right, this is quite a big piece of wood to work at, but if you're working with grain, you can move some good stuff. This is always good when you're doing a pouring cut, right? If you're doing stuff like this towards yourself, for that last little bit, because that's really, really sharp, so that last little bit, that just helps. Even if you don't wear it all the time, just when doing, I, I do when I'm doing some pouring cuts like this, especially trying to take big lumps of wood off because you're putting some pressure on them, pop, and then your thumb splitting off. So mine's fine. And it doesn't really, this is just a, a normal rubber glove, uh, a work glove. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be like a, a cut proof glove. That'll just give you that little bit of protection, whereas it, it won't cut you if you just touch, but. And it just gives you that little bit of protection. But moving this sort of stuff, I've got quite a lot of wood to take off this. I've got to bring all this, narrow all that down. Narrow it face down. I think he's going to, he's, he's going to turn out to be a, a cartoony type mule. And, and then I've got to take these edges out. Most important thing about carving is sharp. Sharp will cut you, but blunt will cut you worse and easier due to the fact you're using more pressure. As you can see, I'm just getting shaped down. As I say, I don't know how far I'll go into detail. Depends how, <laughs> how bored I get with it, if I get bored with it. From hacking away at it, we will see. Just trying to show you what I'm doing here as well. I'm not separating Ed, well I'm separating Ed slightly. I'm, so I'm doing a cut in here because his head's got to def defined from his shoulders and his back. But by taking chips out like this, I mean I'm leaving myself some wiggle room for when I go later on. Yeah. But I'm trying to divide, define shape more now, and then I can pull that down. That can come down. That can come down to this to meet it, because again, it's it's still far too thick, obviously. But I want him to have obviously a back and a bum, and his little feet either side. So I've got that for in about 40 minutes, um, I've just been working away at it, it's quite a lot to take off but I'll get there, I have the time. <laughs> so I've just been 
cutting out his side, one side, and again just keep working around on it. I'm going to get the other side to that state, or to that state, and then see how it goes. It might end up being a fat uh, mule. <laughs> see how much I want to take away, said by hand. There are other methods to uh, make a blank. I might do a video on that. So guys, got a little bit more done. Basically what I'm doing is cutting in to these and then going from three directions so that I can pop a, a chip out as I go. It's going to be a little bit of a wonky donkey. He'll be sitting on his side. If you've ever seen <laughs> an ass sitting on his ass, then this is the sort of thing we're going for. It's coming on. There's a good couple of hours working that now. I'll keep going. So, this is where I'm at so far. Do more work on that. Split legs at front. This leg goes under and through. Uh, I use this little flat chisel just to sort of get into this area. Still got a little bit more work to do on that, but I'm going to do face and ears now. Let's see what I can come up with. Let's see if I make him amusing. So, I've got a mouth on him. I'm not going to cut his nostrils because this stuff's too grainy. I don't know whether you can see grain on this, but this tends to be hard where dark lines are, really soft where light lines are, and what will happen is you get a lot of chip out. So I'll paint his nostrils on. I cut his eyes in. I just put a cross. <laughs> I cut a cross, yeah, as a stop cut, and then shaved it off up and just shaped them up like that I shaped a bit of a mouth round I'm going to split his ears this is going to be a difficult bit because this green's running as you can see across and now I've got to be careful <laughs> well managed to split him at base without breaking him off yet and I basically went in it's hard to show camera angle but you go in cut cut again in three directions and I did it from both sides and managed to get through and now I've got to split them and give them some funky ears right then I've got his ears so he's still quite chunky um, I'm gonna try and define some work on his legs like obviously his hooves and his joints a little bit you can cover a lot of ugly with paint you know what I mean or definition um, as I say I'll just try and get a little bit more on his legs I might thin them down a little bit it was meant to be in scale with this but mules and donkeys are smaller than horses aren't they <laughs> but it doesn't matter it's not the real world but so I'll try and do a little bit on that and I'll show you that before I start doing any painting and what I'll probably do is I could carve him, I've got enough wood here to carve him a tail if I wanted to uh, but I'm not going to carve a mane or a tail I'm going to use some jute string to do a tail and a mane on him and see how that turns out I'll be back so that's what I'm talking about. Just getting a bit more def definition in shape. Thin that front leg out. Still got to do that one. And uh, looks a little better. So guys, I think I've done as much as I'm gonna do. Putting some little hoofs on his knees, thinned his legs down, I thinned his face out a little bit. He's quite a mean looking ass. <laughs> and uh, got both sides done put some definition under him so that when he's sat looks like his legs probably difficult to see there but you'll see that after and this is going to be the end of part one because like I said what I'm going to do I'm going to paint him up and um, I might make a, a bridle for him out of jute as well as the tail and the mane and I'll see how that works out Part 2 should be out in a couple of days, or even tomorrow. 
wants to be nice. Okay, turntable needs work. There's another project. Take six.